All right, hopefully by now everybody's joined, so we'll get started. Uh, thanks again for joining the webinar with Verisite today. My name is Nate Drude. I'm on the software team here at Verisite, and also with me on this webinar is Aviad Haddad uh, on the hardware team, Pierre Luigi Passaro on the software team, and Tal Samo, who's our managing director for sales and marketing in the Americas. Today we'll be answering frequently asked questions from our customers, uh, including questions submitted in advance, as well as a live Q&A session. Like always, a recording of the webinar will be available, so don't feel like you need to remember or write everything down uh, during the webinar. This is our agenda today. It's, it's pretty short. We'll start with just a few slides introducing Verisite. Uh, then we'll go through some of the submitted questions, and then we will enter into a, a live Q&A session uh, to answer any questions that you submit during the webinar. Okay, so an introduction to Verisite. Verisite is a leading system on module provider. We've been in the market for over 19 years and have built an extensive global customer base and pipeline. Verisite provides a stable supply by using our internal production facilities, giving us complete control over the manufacturing process. Our hardware and software R&D teams provide uh, direct support to customers, usually within 24 hours. Verisite is the only SOM vendor in NXP's Platinum Membership Program. We provide the most diversified and scalified, uh, scalable uh, IMX-based product portfolio. Verisite has the highest quality standards meeting strict regulatory requirements, including medical standards. And finally, Verisite has an ecosystem of partners that in the end allow us to provide a complete end-to-end -end solution to our customers. Okay, so why should you choose a Verisite system on module? Uh, Verisite system on modules provide a faster time to market. Using a system on module allows you to minimize your hardware and software development and testing phases. Uh, there's reduced R&D costs. Uh, you can avoid the high costs and risk of hiring a design team and instead take advantage of Verisite's expertise in the complexities of SOM design and layout, both hardware and software. Uh, scalability, Verisite has several SOM families supporting many different SOCs that allow for seamless scalability for current or future products and technology. With Verisite, you can expect 100% yield all the time. You'll receive fully functional modules from Verisite. No need to manage the complexities of manufacturing and testing yourself. Uh, Verisite's hardware and software is production ready. We have BSP and driver support for multiple operating systems such as Yocto, boot to qt Debian, and Android. <clears throat> the hardware and software is tested by Verisite and used by Verisite's large community of customers. Verisite provides free technical support for both hardware and software, allowing direct access to our R&D engineers using our customer support portal. Also, all of our software is open source on GitHub. We provide access to CAD files, and we have helpful guides and documentation on our software wiki. Our in-house production enables stable availability and lead times, and we have up to 15 years of longevity, so you can rest assured that you'll have long-term support from Verisite. Verisite has two scalable SOM families. One is named the VAR-SOM, and the second is the DART family. On the top, you can see the VAR-SOM modules, which offer scalability from the IMX6UL all the way up to the IMX8M+. In general, these are all pin-to-pin -pin compatible with each other. The DART family on the bottom also uh, has a smaller form factor, but provides more interfaces than the SOM family. Uh, it also is pin-to-pin -pin, uh, scalable within its own family and supports scaling from the ADEM Plus, uh, ADEM Mini to the ADEM Plus. These two SOM families provide scalability and processing capabilities while maintaining the same interfaces and form factor, allowing you to scale from the Cortex A7 and A9 processors up to the A53 and A72, depending on your product's requirements. Again, this is who we have on the webinar today. We have myself, Nate Drude, um, on the R&D uh, software team. We have Pierre Luigi Pissarro, who's also on the software team. We have Aviad Haddad on our hardware team, and 
Tal Samo, who manages sales and marketing in the Americas. As I mentioned, Verisite has a software wiki where you'll find uh, some specific documentation for all of our software releases. We have developer guides for Yocto, Android, boot to qt Debian, and FreeRTOS. We have how-to guides for using all of the hardware interfaces like GPIO and UARTs, cameras, Wi-Fi, etc. Uh, you'll find a link to Verisite's customer support portal, as well as a lot of other helpful documentation. Uh, when navigating the wiki, uh, you should go to verywiki.com and select your SOM, and then select your software release, and then you'll find documentation that is specific to that software release. As I mentioned earlier, we also have a customer support center. Using the customer support center, you can log into our customer support portal to ask questions directly to our R&D team. There are some frequently asked questions and answers on this page that you may want to review. There's information about product longevity for each of our SOMs. And finally, there is information about our product com uh, compliance policies for things like REACH, Rojas, UL, ISO certifications, and so forth. So you can find the customer support center by going to verywiki.com, selecting your SOM, and then selecting the developer's guide for your software release and then clicking on the Verisite customer portal link. So now we'll start the questions part of the webinar. If you're wondering how you can submit a question, there is a questions panel that you may need to expand. It should look like what you see in the image here. And then you can use that to type in any question that you may have. Uh, we'll do our best to answer all the questions that are submitted. If we miss your question, uh, you can open a ticket in the customer support portal after the webinar. All right, so now we'll uh, jump into the questions. Uh, the first question is for Aviad. It says, I wish to embed your SOM in my design. Aside from the design resources that are available, will I receive any guidance during the hardware design process? Uh, we provide support to our uh, portal for the hardware design, starting from the Plimux selection stage, like checking for Plimux violations, going through the board schematics, where we check the connectivity, power reset, boot, and other aspects. And also after prototype production during the bring up stage, uh, this simplifies the board development process for customers, so they are able to have a working prototype very easily and fast. Um, there is also a very detailed wiki page, like uh, Nate mentioned, that will show you how to test the different interfaces. Um, through the portal, you can communicate directly with our engineers, both uh, software and hardware, and get answers from them directly. Great. Thanks, Aviad. Uh, next question uh, is for Pierre. It says, how does Verisite help customers achieve final product certifications, such as RED, CE, FCC, and, and so forth? Well, uh, about the Wi-Fi certification, Bluetooth certification, I mean, FCC, I said uh, at the MIC, basically all of our songs come with the pre-certified Bluetooth Wi-Fi models. Uh, this pre-certification is available from the song vendor, for, sorry, for, from the Bluetooth uh, Wi-Fi chip vendor. We can share them with the customer once they ask, and we have a specific procedure depending on the on the specific uh, uh, firmware that is installed on the song that we can share for the cast with the customer for uh, additional tests that um, the customer may want to execute according to um, the certification authority uh, that is inspecting the, the final product. About the RED and CE, basically these are product certifications and that they follow their own process and the, the, the product must be certified as a, um, a whole system. So there's no uh, partial certification that we can provide, but in any case, we will assist the customer in any step of this process. 
Great, thanks, Pierre. Next question is for Aviad. It says, we are in the evaluation stage and are unsure of our uh, final SOM configuration. Is it possible for us to modify the SOM manually so we can test several assembly options, such as without an audio codec or without an Ethernet file? So you can order the SOM with the stock configuration, which will include the mainline assembly options. Uh, you can order any number of stock configuration SOMs, but for customer configurations, there may be a minimum number of SOMs uh, required. So if you wish to evaluate uh, the more specific interfaces, which are not part of the stock configuration, we can provide you with the <clears throat> rework instructions, how to modify the SOM. Usually this involves uh, removing the main chip and uh, some short resistors and installing other short resistors instead. Uh, once you verify the assembly option for your needs, you can then order uh, the specific uh, assembly variant uh, of the SOM. Great, thanks Aviad. And this uh, next question is, is also related. It says that for SOMs that have the audio codec populated, is it possible to disable that function? Uh, additionally, can some of the uh, audio codec pins be repurposed as GPIO? So uh, disabling the codec software side will not expose the additional pins because the codec will still be in the middle. Uh, in order to access uh, the GPIOs, the SOM should be ordered without the audio codec or uh, it will be needed to be reworked manually like uh, I explained in the previous question. All right, thanks. The next question I will answer uh, says, what is the roadmap for Android releases for the 8M Plus uh, as it relates to Google's Android compatibility program? So basically for the, the Android uh, roadmap from Verisite, we follow NXP's release cycle for Android. Uh, so as NXP uh, releases a new Android release, we'll generally port this to Verisite SOMs and make our own release. We might skip on from time to time, but uh, this is generally our process. Uh, regarding the product compatibility, uh, this is something you'll need to work with Google directly on. So I suggest uh, engaging with Google to start this product, this process for your product. Okay, the next question here is for Pierre, it says, uh, is it possible to connect two DSI displays to the Dart MX8 M Plus directly? Well, Dart MX8 M Plus is based on NXP MX8 M Plus, and this uh, system on chip provides three possible display interfaces. Uh, one is the NVDS, one is the DSI, and one is the HDMI. So, if you expect to connect natively to the side, this is not possible, but you can use some kind of bridge. One uh, DSI interface is available. The other one, you should bridge either the LVDS or the HDMI. That's it. Okay, thanks. Uh, next question is for Tal. Uh, Tal, can you tell us more about Versite's sourcing and manufacturing process? Uh, where do you primarily source your components from? And where does production and assembly happen? Yes, Nathan, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, so yeah, so that's a very good question. So first of all, Varisite procure all the components only for top tier vendors. Uh, Varisite manufacture million, millions of some peers. So we have very close relationship with all the top tier vendors. If it's NXP, TI, uh, analog device, microchip, the whole, uh, we are procuring from them uh, in high volumes. Uh, one of the things that makes Varisite unique is we are probably the only song vendor that has its own uh, state-of-the-art production lines. Okay? They are located in Israel. Uh, they comply with both the uh, ISO 9001 and the medical ISO as well, 134085. Uh, this is a huge advantage, mainly in these days of uh, component allocation. We fully own a production line. We never had an issue, uh, you know, with uh, uh, with manufacturing or with capacity. Uh, we are keeping around 40% spare capacity on our production lines, and that gives us a huge advantage, which we do not rely on any CM 
uh, for manufacture, uh, both for the quality and for for the flexibility we can we can get with our own production lines. Great, thank you, Sal. Uh, next question for Pierre. Pierre, we have a series of software questions for you. Actually, uh, it says. Uh, how can we drive an external HDMI screen with the Dart MX8M on the evaluation board? This doesn't seem to be working. However, uh, the onboard touchscreen does seem to work. Well, the evaluation kit uh, basically provides several options, and uh, most of these options are managed through the device tree. There's not a, an automatic selection because uh, of the possible option. There are plenty of possible options, but in the wiki, you have dedicated pages. If you go through the Yocto USB and then you select uh, the um, how to section, there is in the auto section, there is a specific uh, display page where you can find the instruction to automate to activate uh, the HDMI support. And we tested it uh, with uh, several uh, HDMI displays, standard uh, HDMI, full HD, 4K display. We have no problem, at least as far as I know. So probably it's just a matter of selecting the, the dedicated device tree. That's it. Okay, thank you. Another question for you, Pierre. It says, is it possible to make the system boot with a custom boot logo? without any Linux prompt uh, until some software triggers the normal uh, display, I'm assuming the application to run. Well, we have a dedicated log in the kernel. And it is uh, one of our patches. Actually, you can check it uh, along the community history, but uh, we can provide the further detail. It's public, actually. And uh, this logo can be customized without any problem. Uh, there is an additional logo when the file system starts that is in the pre-splash in the latest releases we just uh, added some uh, changes to allow the customer to directly provide the png and uh, this mainly covered the uh, kernel and the file system so the root file system uh, for you boot uh, this mainly depends on the availability of the graphics support in the U-Boot. Usually U-Boot doesn't care about the graphics because it's just to initialize uh, the basic stuff. When the graphics is available, uh, there is a bitmap that uh, the U-Boot read from the slash boot folder usually, and it's shown on the display when the system power up. Great, thanks, Pierre. Tail, we have another question for you. Uh, it says, does the uh, does Verisite's longevity program also cover subcomponents such as the Wi-Fi modules uh, in order to maintain certifications through the lifetime of the end product? Yeah, so, so basically, it's a good question. So basically, Verisite provides a very vast longevity commitment, 15 years for the majority of our products. Uh, and the commit longevity commitment is based on the fact that, uh, or on the basis that as long as we can continue and procure the application processor, if it's from NXP or from PI, we'll verify that all other components on the SOM meets the same longevity. Even if it requires to do software or other changes, we, we continue and, and do that in order to continue and, and keep the longevity commitment. Uh, some cases it could be like straightforward, no changes. Some cases, you know, it will require some, uh, you know, in the very unique cases, we also do layout changes, but. Uh, as we always do, it will, it will always cover, will be covered by, by a formal PCN, which all the customers receive. Um, you know, and, and again, this, this is our commitment. If uh, specifically for the Wi-Fi, we understand it's a very, uh, very uh, challenging part because of the certification. So we definitely do our best to do so. But, uh, you know, in cases we need to, in case the Wi-Fi, um, is end of life or something like that, we'll verify that we can find uh, another Wi-Fi uh, that meets the SOM, but and uh, meets the longevity. But until today, uh, we never had these issues. When we select, you know, our components, we verify uh, at least for the critical ones, as Wi-Fi, uh, for example, uh, that they will have the same longevity as the application processor. So in that aspect, I don't see an issue. 
and in, if there's a specific case, we can always, part of the PCM will always give uh, last time buy uh, to cover, cover the life of this product as well. Great, thanks, Tal. Uh, Pierre, another one for you. It says, uh, regarding, uh, regarding Verisite's bullseye release, are there any special additions to Debian? Uh, so we're talking about Debian bullseye here. Are there any special additions to Debian which are proprietary to Verisite? Where can I find the full source code for this release? Well, on our side, we publish the, the DSP with all the instructions, uh, mainly the Yugut and the kernel republic. We provide the uh, pre-packaged uh, Debian packages for some uh, packages like Wayland, like uh, the, the uh, GPU and VPU acceleration. Basically, basically, what we provide is whatever comes from Yocto may be reorganized for Debian. But what we can't provide because we simply don't have and XP doesn't share the source code for all the acceleration libraries. I'm strictly referring to video acceleration and uh, graphical acceleration. These are uh, NXP proprietary and uh, they are not public at all, not even for us. So we can just share the, the binary package and we can ensure that the packet, binary package is uh, compatible with the uh, bullseye's release or whatever. There's no difference between Debian, Yakuta, Bootcute or whatever. What we share is uh, whatever we can receive uh, from NXP and we customize, uh, that's what we can provide. I think just, you might have mentioned it, just to add one thing to that, to that about where can we find the software for it. You, if you go to the wiki, you select your SOM and you select the release, there should be a release notes uh, page that will show the GitHub repository for all of the source code. So you can find that by going through the wiki. Thanks, Pierre. Um, next question again for you, Pierre. Uh, is there an ATEX or ATEX certificate uh, certificate for the Dart MX6 or the Dart MX8 M Plus? And just for the for the audience, the ATEX is the exclusive certification. Uh, basically, uh, the certification apply to the product, not to the single part. So we can once again we can assist the, the customer during the certification process. But there is nothing some side that can prevent this, or can, or that we can strictly provide the as pre-certified. Great, thanks. Uh, again, another one for you, Pierre, about uh, Chromium. So right now, it says right now the system seems to only support software rendering in Chromium. What is necessary to enable hardware accelerated graphics? Unfortunately, since uh, uh, NXP use uh, um, a proprietary uh, IP for the graphical acceleration, Chromium does not support this at all. There's nothing that we can do. A uh, long time ago, there was a community uh, project that was aiming to integrate this uh, acceleration with Chromium, but uh, it stopped since years. So basically, the best option you have is not using uh, Chromium. There are there are new approaches like you like using um, uh, Kog. This is a, a kind of uh, basic browser browser that in, is able to integrate uh, IMAX uh, acceleration, graphical acceleration, and this is public, open source. There is some documentation uh, available. And uh, should fit all the uh, um, requirement about uh, both the graphical acceleration and the uh, uh, video integration because it's also the second aspect. Chromium does not support uh, the integration with the video acceleration from IMX. One thing I would thanks, Pierre. One thing I'd also add is that uh, you can also use uh, QT's WebView or, or Web Engine uh, libraries to build your own your own web browser as well. Uh, next question again for Pierre. It says, does the Dart MX8MM for the Mini support voltage 
and frequency scaling in Linux? If so, what is a good way to measure and test this? Well, we have a dedicated page in the wiki. So just uh, you can just select uh, your Yocto BSP and then go to the left column in the auto section. You can see a dedicated page for the CPU. And you can test yourself. You can enable or disable one of the core. You can uh, force the uh, governor policy to say that the CPU must always perform at uh, its own best or uh, in power safe mode. Or you can fix it uh, or you can use uh, your own user policy according to whatever you like. And uh, following the wiki, you will be able to set uh, all the possible uh, frequency that uh, you want to test. and. Uh, usually control the power consumption. This is the main goal of the <clears throat> dynamic uh, voltage frequency scale. Great, thank you. Uh, next question I'll answer. It says, in general, which parts of the BSB need to change to support a custom carrier board? And what is the best process to follow for bringing up a new design? So uh, for most, Carrier boards, uh, you should start with Verisite's official uh, official software release and port the U-boot and Linux device trees. Uh, for some more fundamental changes, like if you move the debug serial port to another UART, you may need to modify some of the firmware like ETF or SCU, depending on the platform. Uh, regarding the process, uh, it's best to start with U-boot, where you'll possibly need to modify the device tree and sometimes also SPL and U-boot board level initialization code. If you're running into any problems, it's it's best to start by disabling any devices that you've removed from your carrier board and then start uh, adding and testing devices one by one. Uh, for U-boot, you should only enable the devices that are required to boot uh so uh, only the, the devices that are required to boot linux so you don't need to worry about initializing things like bluetooth or a touchscreen controller in uboot and then after uboot's working you can begin working on porting the linux device tree uh, again it's best to start with verisite's device tree and then remove any unused devices and then add new devices one by one and as you add devices to the device tree you may also need to enable the driver in the def config we have a webinar that walks through this process. It's called Getting Started with Device Trees. So I uh, suggest if uh, this is something you're interested in learning more about, taking a look at that uh, later. And then finally, after you update U-Boot in Linux, you can update the Yocto or Debian or Android uh, recipes or scripts to include your new uh, U-Boot and Linux patches. Uh, the next question I will also answer. It says, uh, what software changes are needed for my Yocto image to run on multiple SOMs, such as the ADEM Mini and the ADEM Plus? So most of the time when Verisite releases a Yocto version like Kirkstone or Yocto Hardknot, uh, it will support our entire IMX8 family. So if this is the case, then all the SOMs will uh, most likely use the same U-Boot and Linux and Yocto branches. So in this case, uh, then for each SOM, you need to port U-Boot and Linux, like I just uh, mentioned in the previous question. And then after uh, customizing U-Boot and Linux, you can update the MetaVerisite BSP U-Boot and Linux recipes to include your changes and build the same uh, Yocto image for each SOM like you normally would. The Yocto machine configuration will build and install the correct U-Boot and Linux device tree files and any other relevant firmware in addition to the common packages selected by the image. So uh, in the end, since Verisite's release supports multiple SOMs, you can use it as an example and a starting place and then simply customize the U-Boot and Linux branches to add support for your board. Let's see here. The, uh, okay, the next question is for Aviad. So that is there any recommended heat spreader or any form of active or passive cooling for the Dart uh, slash SOM ADEM plus? Is one needed at all for the ADEM plus platforms? 
So under typical usage uh, in ambient te uh, temperature, the DART or SOM can operate without any heat spreading solution. Uh, for uh, more heavy duty applications, uh, heat spreader may be required. Uh, we have on our uh, website available a uh, heat sink for the DART and SOM families, which uh, you can purchase. Uh, you can order the heat sink with its thermal pads and screws and it can be assembled on the SOM and uh, secured to the carrier board. Uh, also note that on both EVKs of the DART and the SOM, there is a dedicated header for fan power supply if uh, required. But uh, ultimately, the customer needs to evaluate uh, if a heat uh, dissipation solution is needed uh, in the product since this depends uh, on the specific application and uh, the environment. Thanks, Aviad. Next question is for Pierre. It says, what are the best practices and options for me to program the EMMC with my factory image using the default configuration shipped from Verisite? Well, we can start from the standard uh, way. I mean, uh, we have a source from this D and we can use our script, uh, we can use a USB and have uh, our own scripts, you know, on the USB key and run them from USB. Or we can also provide the, actually we provide in the wiki some instruction about the boot from uh, uh, internet. Basically the U boot approach the network file system and load it and uh, this allow to program uh, the whole system. <laughs> Another approach is to uh, force the, the board to boot in a kind of recovery mode, uh, basically forcing uh, the boot from SD card without a real uh, SD card present. The microcode within the GPU uh, will start booting from the OTG. This is usually uh, the, the last option when you somehow uh, burned the wrong USB or sorry, the, the wrong reboot, or you may want to uh, access directly to the reboot. And uh, this also allows uh, to uh, access the, the volume and see using the uh, UMS command from the boot. And uh, we have the dedicated instruction to use the UUU manufacturing tool uh, that uh, program the images using the fast boot. Be aware that all uh, the production sounds uh, comes from, from our site with a uh, U-boot, the same that we use to um, check all of the SOM, 100% SOM as tested before shipping. And uh, we also provide uh, a pay, prepaid service uh, to uh, preload the specific images on the SOM. Great, thank you, Pierre. Uh, we have another question for you here. It says, is it possible to upgrade to QT6 uh, in the Yakto Dunfell release? Well, uh, it's possible, first of all. The community, for a sequence of reasons that uh, I will skip, decided to not uh, provide official support to QT6. So the only official support for Qt6 comes from Qt team. Uh, formally, there's nothing preventing you to create uh, your own set of scripts and uh, recipes to include the Qt6 uh, within Yocto. You will not find them in any uh, community repository, mainly MetaFreeScale or whatever. Thank you. Uh, there's another question here that I'll answer. It says, can the A53 and M7 share the same I2C peripheral? Uh, it says we only use one in our system, but both processors need to communicate to some I2C devices, although not at the same time. Uh, so for the, uh, if you're running Linux on the A53 and some firmware on the M7, the uh, peripherals need to be isolated. So only the M7 firmware can, can use one peripheral and the A53 can use another, but they both can't share it or there'll be some kind of uh, conflict. Uh, what I recommend doing is if you have, uh, you mentioned you have several different I2C devices, you could 
you could put them on different I2C buses. So you know, I put one on I2C1 and another on I2C2, and then you can uh, communicate uh, with, with say, I2C1 from Linux and I2C2 from the Cortex M7. Uh, the other approach, if uh, they, they need to be accessed by both, would be to, to uh, just assign them to either the A53 or the M7 and then use the messaging system uh, to send the data uh, between Linux and the M7 firmware. Okay, the next question here uh, is also for me. It says, uh, can you summarize the pros and cons of the various BSPs like Android and BootQT, Debian and, and Yocto? So I will, uh, <laughs> I'll try to do this. Uh, there are there are many reasons why somebody may prefer to use uh, Yocto or BootQT or Debian or Android. Sometimes it's as simple as the developers at a particular company are uh, just familiar with it and enable a, this enables a faster time to market. Uh, but I'll try to summarize what I think are some of the benefits and motivations and some of the I guess the cons or downsides of using each operating system. Uh, so we'll start with Yocto. In my opinion, one of the biggest benefits of Yocto is that uh, packages are built from source code and can be reproduced from a manifest file. So this means that anybody with the manifest can easily reproduce an image, even one that is made a long time ago, like five years ago or something. Uh, this allows you to duplicate a specific version of software uh, to reproduce, uh, say, an image running on the field. Uh, since each package is built from source, uh, the packages can be patched and modified as needed for the application. Uh, the software configuration on all deployed devices is known and reproducible from the source code. Updates are atomic when you use a framework like SW Update or Mender. This protects against things like power loss or package version, versions being misaligned on all your deployed devices. Uh, the final image is customized with only the packages required by the application. So this allows a more efficient usage of RAM, uh, storage, and, and CPU. Uh, some of the, the downsides is that image building can take a long time and a lot of energy to download and compile since you're building everything from source code. And the development workflow can be a little bit tedious, especially if you're not familiar with Yocto. Uh, normally, a Yocto image doesn't include a packaging system like AppGet. Uh, so to install new packages, you need to add them to the image recipe and then rebuild the image or, or deploy it some other way. Uh, but however, as I mentioned earlier, I think this is actually really the strength of Yocto as it forces you to build your image in a way that's reproducible from a manifest file. Uh, we'll look at boot to qt next or boot to qt uh, it's, it's built on top of Yocto. So most of the pros and cons from Yocto also apply to boot to qt um, it's provided by Qt, so it, it offers the best integration with Qt-based applications or products. Uh, newer, generally speaking, the version of Qt will be newer when compared to the same uh, Yocto version. So, for example, the uh, version of Qt and boot to Qt hard now will be newer than uh, Yocto hard now. Uh, Qt also provides clear documentation for how to build an SDK uh, for application development on a Windows computer. One thing to pay attention to when developing with boot to qt is the commercial licensing. I won't go into details on this, but just make sure you review the licensing and reach out to uh, QT as necessary. For Debian, uh, Debian allows for easy package installation, uh, and it's very familiar for people who are on desktop computers. It allows for package installation using uh, apt-get utilities. This uh, enables for fast prototyping since you can start with uh, Verisite's Debian image and then just use app to install any packages that you need on the target device. Uh, it's easy to deploy minor updates, again, through these Debian packages um, and easy to update the packages using the Debian repositories, as I mentioned. However, the uh, downside is that this allows for package versions to be mismatched, uh, making it difficult to reproduce problems on systems in the field. Uh, since updates aren't atomic, uh, you can run into problems during power loss that can cause uh, misconfigurations. And in a way, Debian can be considered unstable since the packages are not 
compiled from source code by you, the developer. If, if any of the mirrors are no longer available in the future, it may be hard to reproduce your image. And then lastly, Android. Um, a lot of times customers will select Android because their developers are familiar with it and they already have uh, some ecosystem built on top of Android. Uh, it also provides WeDivine support for decrypting DRM uh, protected content uh, like videos. There's a large pool of developer resources available uh, from the phone and tablet markets. Um, however, Android is usually more resource hungry than other uh, operating systems. And it's somewhat harder to upgrade uh, from one Android version to another since it often requires different partitioning schemes of the storage devices. So I'm sure there are other considerations or motivations that I didn't mention and probably the developers of each uh, operating system may have some opinions, but uh, that's kind of my high level summary of the pros and cons of each option. Um, let's see here. Next question uh, will be for Pierre, and we're, we're running out of time here, so we probably have time for one or more questions, uh, one or two more questions, and then we'll we'll close out the webinar. So, uh, Pierre, this this question's for you. Uh, it says the Yocto SDK does not include uh, some custom libraries or headers that I need. How can I add them to the SDK? Um, this is actually wanted. The main goal of Yocto is to be as quick as uh, tiny as possible. So only the strictly required uh, libraries are supposed to be part of the meta the chain package once built. Whenever a customer needs to create uh, a file system which includes specific libraries and want to use these libraries for his own compilation, the best approach is to include the libraries within the file system. In any case, they will be needed for the runtime execution and then generate the, the SDK starting from the file system. To do this, um, the Yocto provides a dedicated command that is uh, something like bitbake-c populate SDK with the name of the image. Once done, you will have a dedicated SDK that exactly match uh, whatever library is in the file system. So uh, whatever runtime library you will have, in the file system, you will also have the headers files and the uh, compiling library in the SDK. This is the best option that you have to have a, a complete SDK that can do whatever you really need. Great, thanks, Pierre. And uh, we have time for just one more question here. Uh, I'll take this question. It, it says, I noticed that FreeRTOS is not being mentioned. Uh, is this since Verisai does not really support this OS? Actually, that's a good point. I, I probably could have included uh, FreeRTOS or what's also uh, uh, talked about as the MCU Expresso SDK from NXP in my last uh, comparison. Um, so, so basically, NXP releases a uh, MCU. It's called MCU Expresso SDK with with uh, example firmware projects for the Cortex M4. And M7 processors on our uh, IMXA platforms, and for each uh, each of these releases, just like with Yocto and Android and so forth, Verisite will port these to our SOMs. Um, some of these examples are just bare metal examples, and other examples are running free RTOS. And uh, we actually have a full webinar that we did on uh, debugging and and. You know, some of the pros and cons of, of using uh, FreeRTOS and the Cortex M4 and M7. Uh, so you can you can review that afterwards. Generally speaking, it's it's you know one of its biggest strengths is that it allows for real time uh, re real time basically reaction and response to uh, different inputs and outputs. So unlike Linux, that's not real time. You can have a real a real time application running on the Cortex M4 or M7 and then uh, use the messaging system to send information up to Linux as needed. So for more information on that, uh, you can you can check out our previous webinar. And we also have uh, our wiki also has a lot of information about how to get started uh, with FreeRTOS and MCU Expresso. So OK, as I mentioned, um, that's all the questions we'll have time to get through today. 
uh, if I missed one of your questions or you uh, didn't uh, get a chance to submit one or, or you think of something new later, you can always feel free to go to our customer support portal and open a new ticket with us and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Here are some ways to contact us. You can go to uh, verisite.com to see our website and all of our products. Uh, you can contact our sales team at sales at verisite.com. Uh, you can go to our customer portal, uh, which I've talked about several times uh, by, by going through the wiki and, and following that link. You can go to uh, verywiki.com to see our software wiki and all of our open source software on github.com slash verygit. So on behalf of everybody uh, on the webinar and, and all of our site, thanks for joining today. And uh, we look forward to uh, future webinars in the future.